welcome to this segment of Guess the Shock now, where we, we just saw that trash barrel being picked up and emptied, and then the recycling barrel being picked up and emptied. Uh, so what was the peak event, the peak acceleration, and the pulse width of that event? For the recycling truck, it was when the barrel was being emptied uh, into the truck, and that was a 54G uh, peak acceleration with a one millisecond pulse width. Then for the trash truck and the trash barrel, the peak was uh, when the trash barrel was actually placed down on the ground, and that was a 31G uh, peak with the one and a half millisecond pulse width. So that's the end result, but how do we, how do we get there? Uh, how do we analyze this data? So first off, the trash truck and the recycling truck, both, both uh, tests generated you know, about a gigabyte of, of data because we turned on the device and we're waiting for the trash truck to come. We could have used triggering, but we wanted to just capture all the you know, preceding several seconds of data when the, when the trash truck came. So we have a lot of data. So I split that file into 10 megabyte chunks and then use the summarizer tool to find uh, when, you know, we, when we had that peak event, which is here, and then I can open uh, that file. And so this is a recycling data. Um, you know, we can also see here too across this one one hour uh, recording file. You know how the temperature changed and and other other things like that. Now, in the trash truck, uh, did the same thing about a one gigabyte file, split it, and then looked at the ten megabyte segments, which were you know about two minutes each, uh, and found when the the trash truck was was there picking up the the barrel. What's interesting though, there was a little blip event uh, here where somebody walking by or something must have, have hit the barrel, which is interesting. So now that we found the, you know, the, the couple of minutes uh, uh, of data that the barrel was picked up, here it is. And so on the left is the uh, uh, trash truck and on the right is the recycling truck. A couple things that I think are pretty interesting. One is you can see here in the pressure data the pressure drops as the barrel's picked up. Uh, you can also see that, obviously, in the recycling truck, uh, same thing. The other thing that's cool is, you know, the barrel's being picked up and, and going from this orientation to basically upside down, and you see the orientation sensor notice, noticing that. But the orientation sensor, it gives you outputs of quaternion, which intuitively is difficult to understand. Uh, so I'll show you how I analyze that in a second. And then looking at the uh, DC accelerometer has a DC response. I'll turn off the mean removal. You can see that the mean kind of shifts around as the barrel is being turned upside down. So I said, all right, how do I how do I look at this uh, data and get a and use that to understand what was happening um, from a tilt perspective? So I, the lab feature now has uh, the ability to write your own Python scripts. So I did that here. I wrote a Python script to use uh, acceleration data to calculate. So it's running now here as it's opening. Use acceleration data to calculate tilt and then use the quaternion data to convert to Euler angles uh, to, to understand what happened. So here's the unfiltered DC uh, accelerometer data and then applying a uh, smoothed moving average filter sees just basically the DC offset change over time. And then I look at you know, the x-axis because it was mounted uh, like this with the x-axis being the, that dominant uh, axis from an orientation's perspective. I looked at that and you see, yeah, it basically turns upside down, uh, just calculating tilt from, from the, the gravity vector change. But now looking at the quaternion data, again, you get these four different um, uh, channels, X, Y, Z, and W. What does that mean? You convert to Euler angles, uh, and you see here that yeah, it went from you know a, a negative 80 uh, orientation basically to a, a positive 80 as it, it flipped all the way around and then came back. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool, and that's cool that we can use the the script editor in in the lab now to write this code and calculate it uh, something custom uh, like this. The other thing I wanted to look at was uh, the the shock event itself. And so I wrote a different script here to, uh, to find the peak event and, and calculate that, that uh, a resultant around that peak. So first off, here's the data it opens. Now I'm looking at the main accelerometer data, uh, the piezoelectric accelerometer. 
and I calculate a resultant off that, so x, y, z, you know, root mean squared uh, of the x, y, z axes, and then using the resultant, I find the peak location and plot 20 milliseconds uh, before and after that peak event. So that, that's this uh, moment here. And again, you, you actually see what's interesting is the x-axis doesn't have the most significant, that's the blue line, doesn't have the most significant amplitude, but it, it, you can see it has a kind of longer pulse as the barrel's put back down, which kind of makes sense. It's bumping, and it's a pretty, pretty more significant shock event in that perspective. So this is a trash truck data, and I can do the script editor uh, here also with the recycling data. Okay, I think it's running. Maybe I should open it. Oh, open the script editor now. Okay. So here's the data from the recycling truck. The calculate a resultant, and then the 20 milliseconds before and after uh, that peak event in the resultant. So that's, you know, that's one way to look at shock data is just the peak amplitude and then, you know, kind of zooming in on that to say, okay, what's my pulse width uh, at this moment? And here you see that the z-axis has this pretty clean uh, plus or minus 5 millisecond um, or 0.5 millisecond uh, event, so about a 1 millisecond pulse width. But the more proper way to analyze shock data, which I'll explain in a blog, is to use the shock response spectrum, which I did in uh, the vibration data toolbox. And that calculates how a system would respond uh, given a natural frequency of the system to help you design uh, and, and, and identify isolators that you may need uh, to, to protect your system. And, and really, when you're looking at shock data, velocity is what matters. Uh, that's what's most uh, correlated with, with energy. And so the velocity during that event when the recycling barrel was placed back down on the ground, or sorry, when the recycling barrel was emptying the recycling uh, contents, was about a 10 inch per second uh, shock event there, which isn't all that significant. Normally we look for 100 inches per second as a, as a harsh event. Um, but this would be a good way to really characterize, characterize that shock uh, event. So that's the segment of Guess the Vibe. I went through a variety of things here, Guess the Shock. I'll, I've uploaded the scripts that I used as well as the data uh, and some of these plots into our community forum uh, for you to, to look at and analyze uh, yourselves with our free software. Uh, thank you and, and have fun testing and analyzing data. Thanks.